Hi everybody, in this video we're going to cover section 2.8, inverses, and how to find the inverse of a function. But we're going to start with the definition of what it means to be for a function to be one-to-one. -one. And the reason that we need this is because for a function to have an inverse, the function has to be one-to-one. -one. So what does it mean? What does one-to-one -one mean? So the definition in your book says a function with domain A is called one-to-one -one if no two elements of A have the same image. So the same output. So meaning f of x1 is not equal to f of x2 whenever x1 is not x2. Um, so another way of saying that is essentially if f of x1 is equal to f of x2, so if two outputs are the same, that means that the inputs have to be the same. So x1 has to equal x2. And in words, we can say essentially every output has exactly one input. So if you remember when we talked about being a function, for something to be a function was every input has to have exactly one output. Now this goes the other way. Every output has to have exactly one input. Um, so graphically, what that means is you can, if you can do the horizontal line test. So a function is one-to-one -one if and only if no horizontal line intersects the graph more than once. So let's look at some examples of that. So I have two functions here, y equals x squared and y equals x cubed. Now they are functions because every input has exactly one output, right? It passes the vertical line test. So the vertical line test to be a function. Now to be one to one, that means that also every output has to have exactly one input. So one of these is one to one or one of them is not one to one. Can you guess which one is not one to one? And so we look at the input, at the outputs. So every output so I'm going to look at the output of 4. So there's 4. So there's the output, and the input is 2. But 4 is also over here. So it has an input of negative 2 as well. right? And that's because negative 2 squared is 4, but also 2 squared is 4. So this output, the output of 4 has two inputs, so it's not one-to-one. -one. And the horizontal line tense is essentially, if I draw a horizontal line, is touching twice, more than once. So this is an example of something that is not one-to-one. -one. What about y equals x cubed? So if you look at the output, any output here, has only one input. So if you draw a horizontal line anywhere on this graph, you're going to touch only once. So then, yes, this is one-to-one. -one. So y equals x cubed is one-to-one. -one. So this has an inverse. Uh, this y equals x squared does not have an inverse in its domain. We can restrict the domain to be able to then find the inverse. So restricting the domain means you would essentially truncate the domain so that part of the graph does pass the, hor the horizontal line test. So usually for a parabola, you truncate the domain at the line of symmetry at the vertex. But we'll talk more about that in a little bit. So let's try some examples. So how do you know if a function is one-to-one -one or not. So you can graph it, or you can do it algebraically. So let's try some examples. Um, is, the, is the function one-to-one -one or not? So let's try a few. Say a f of x is equal to x squared minus one, b, let's say g of x is equal to x minus 3, and c, h of x equals x cubed plus 1. So 1 to 1 or not. So you may be able to just look at it and decide 
um, but we're going to do them algebraically. So essentially, the question that you want to answer is, would you get just one x or more? So does every output have exactly one input, or do you get more inputs? And so um, to solve it, I can say, let, let's look at the first one. So I'm going to call this y. f of x is just a fancy name for y. So y equals x squared minus 1. So for, for my output of y, am I going to get just one x, or am I going to get multiple x's? So let's try example let y equals 4. So actually, let's let it be 3. 3 is easier to compute. Um, so if y was 3, so let's put 3 equals x squared minus 1. If you solve for x, what do you get? So add 1 to both sides. And so when you add 1, you get 4 is equal to x squared. And now remember above, we said, oh, when we have an output of 4, it can be 2 or negative 2. And so here, algebraically, you can see that if we take the square root of both sides, I'm going to get x is equal to plus or minus 2. So for an output of, for y to be 3, I get two output, or two inputs, 2 and negative 2. So this is going to be not 1 to 1. Now that was with a particular y value, but you can just solve it algebraically from the beginning. You can say y equals x squared minus 1. And if I just want to solve for x, um, add 1 to both sides. So I'm going to have y plus 1 is equal to x squared. And then to get the x all by itself, we have to take the square root, right? But anytime you take the square root of a variable, you get the plus or minus. So it's plus or minus the square root of y plus 1 equals x. And so that means that for any output, in this case, you are getting how many inputs? So for any output, we're getting more than one input because of the plus or minus. So this function is not one-to-one. -one. I'm just going to highlight that part. So it's not one-to-one. So oftentimes by looking at it, like I was saying earlier, that some of you may be able to tell whether it's one-to-one -one or not by looking at it. And usually is when you look at the x, if it has an even power, that means when you solve for x and you take that even radical, you're going to get a plus or minus. Anytime that you're getting a plus or minus, that means two inputs. So that's not going to be one-to-one. -one. Now for b, again, this g of x is just a fancy name for y. So y equals x plus x minus 3. So if you solve for x, what do you get? When we solve for x, we just add 3 to both sides. So I'm going to have y plus 3 is equal to x. There's no plus or minus here. There's no way that I'm going to get um, multiple x's. So this one is, yes, this is 1 to 1. And now what about for part C? Um, so same thing here. H of x is just a fancy name for y, the y values. So x cubed plus 1. Solve for x. So subtract 1 from both sides. I'm going to have y minus 1 is equal to x cubed. And now I'm taking the cube root. But the cube root doesn't give me a plus or minus because the cube root of a negative is negative and the cube root of positive is positive. So here I'm just going to get x is the cube root of y minus 1. So it's just one input. Um, so therefore, yes, it is 1 to 1. So the only time you're not going to get that it's not going to be 1 to 1 is when, you, when you're solving for x and you get that plus or minus. And that plus or minus happens when you have an even power for x or an absolute value. Right. Um, if you remember the definition of absolute value, um, so let's make a D here. Let f of x be the absolute value of x. Um, and remember the absolute value when we did the piecewise functions definitions, we said this is x. 
if x is greater than or equal to 0, and negative x if x is less than 0. So here, you're getting two outputs right away. Um, sorry, two inputs. So for y, right, if y is equal to the absolute value of x, to solve for this, you're going to get two inputs, right? And that you can think of it, say, if y equals 7, what can give you 7? The absolute value of 7 is 7, but also the absolute value of minus 7 is 7. So x has two possibilities, right? x is either 7 or x is negative 7. So that means not 1, 2. So even uh, powers of x and absolute values are giving you multiple multiple answers. So those are not going to be one to one. In the next video, we're going to talk about how do you find the inverse? Once you know that a function is one to one, now how do we find the inverse?